Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 772. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about what does Warren Buffett see in Japan? Because recently, Warren Buffett invested a whole lot of money in Japan that he's not been investing in the U.S. stock market. I mean, he did buy into a gold mining company in the U.S., but he's specifically been selling some of his bank shares and getting out of airlines at a loss and doing things to stay away from the U.S. market that don't really portend a very good feeling from Buffett toward U.S. stocks. But here he is going in in a big way in Japan and investing $6 billion into five Japanese companies. So today we're going to talk about that and examine it a little closer and see why he might be doing that, see if we can figure it out. So this article comes to us from Market Watch and it was written by Andrew Berry. And it says, Warren Buffett's surprising $6 billion bet on five Japanese trading companies spotlights the appeal of Japan's long-depressed stock market. Based on several measures, earnings, dividend yield, and price-to-book ratio, Japanese stocks broadly look inexpensive. At the same time, the government's efforts to reduce regulations and taxes and liberalize the labor market are apt to continue after Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's departure. Those policies should help improve weak corporate returns. Japan is a value play, says John Vale, chief global strategist at Nikko Asset Management. But that's also coupled with long-term structural improvements in corporate governance, operational gearing to a global economic upswing, and extreme political stability. Japan's benchmark index, the Topics, trades for under 15 times earnings in the Japanese fiscal year. Japan's benchmark index, the Topics, trades for under 15 times earnings in the Japanese fiscal year ending in March 2022, compared with a price earnings ratio of about 21 times for the S&P 500. The Topics yields 2.4% versus 1.7% for the S&P 500 and trades for 1.2 times book versus 3.9 times book value for the S&P 500. So I wanna pause there. Okay, this is all about valuation and we've talked about how the US stock market is looking very rich in terms of its valuation. And here the argument is that Japan is looking undervalued, it's looking like it has a nice dividend yield, 2.4% versus 1.7% for the S&P 500. So all the valuations look to be lower. And part of that reason is because Japan has had a horrible stock market for decades. So it was at one time a rip-roaring bull market, but they had a population situation where their baby boomers, if you will, got very old and they weren't producing a lot and the economy slowed and the stock market just fell off a cliff and really hasn't recovered. So now that there's a new generation up and coming and new technology in place and new things on the horizon, including new political leaders, maybe this is the time to start looking at Japan as an undervalued place to invest. And that's what they're really saying here. So let's go on and see what else they say. While the overall market is inexpensive, better Japanese companies trade for loftier valuations, reflecting in part Japan's ultra low interest rates. Investors can get exposure to Japan through exchange traded funds, 
mutual funds, and individual stocks, many of which have U.S. listings. Warren Buffett took a somewhat unusual route into the Japanese market. His Berkshire Hathaway bought stakes in a group of opaque Japanese companies that combine the trading of commodities and other goods with investments. Like much of the Japanese market, they were inexpensive, with four of the five companies trading below book value. Buffett has told Japanese investors, don't ignore your own market, Vale says. That could be very helpful. Japan, to be sure, has lots of negatives, an anemic economy, low corporate returns, and poor demographics. A lot of investors get discouraged about deflation, an aging population, and a cultural gap in how managements think, says Yoko Sakai, the director of research at international investing firm Harding Lovner, based in Bridgewater, New Jersey. But she says the situation has improved a lot since Abe made structural corporate reforms one of his three arrows to boost the economy after becoming prime minister for a second time in 2012 with easy monetary policies and fiscal stimulus. How Japan's benchmark stock index rates among other equity indexes. And here they're just showing year-to-date returns of the Japanese market versus the German stock market, the United Kingdom stock market, and the U.S. stock market. And it shows that Japan's market is down 5.2% year-to-date and has an average estimated P.E. ratio of 20.7. Germany is down 1.4% year-to-date and has a higher P.E. ratio, 21.4%, which makes it more richly valued. Year-to-date in the United Kingdom down 22.4% and has a 19.3% P.E. ratio. That's the least of all of them. And the S&P 500 is up 6.9%, the only one with a positive return year-to-date. But its P.E. ratio is also the highest at 26.4%. The article goes on to say the topics is up just 12% in the past five years, against a 76% advance in the S&P 500, and it remains 43% below its 1989 peak. Wow, I didn't realize that. It's 43% below where it peaked in 1989, which just goes to show you that we've gotten a little spoiled to think that the stock market goes up year after year and doesn't get into any long-term bear markets. But the reality is that demographics play a big role in these things, which is one of the things that Harry Dent talked about years ago. And while his predictions of the stock market haven't been exactly accurate, he does have a very interesting point about demographics, and he was able to call the top of the Japanese market in 1989. So imagine if a stock market was 43% below where it had been in 1989. 30 years of not going anywhere, but also being about half as high as it was 30 years ago. There could be some good values to be had there if Japan is on a recovery and if it's going to have a good stock market again. But I'd be wary because it has been a long time. Obviously, Warren Buffett is seeing something here. He's seeing tremendous value. And maybe he's just picking a few companies rather than the entire market, which is probably the smartest strategy in this situation. The topics, like the S&P 500, is weighted by the market value of its components. The other main Japanese index, the Nikkei 225, is price weighted, like the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and is less representative of Japan's major companies. There is nothing like the NASDAQ in Japan. Like Europe, Japan lacks a large and innovative tech sector. Its top five companies, Toyota Motor, Sony, SoftBank Group, Kyance, and Nintendo, have their attributes, but don't compare to the U.S. giants. Only four companies in Japan have market values above $100 billion, against about 65 in the United States. What Japan possesses instead is a group of high-quality industrial businesses like Toyota, Kyance, the leader in factory automation, Daikin Industries, a top global maker of air conditioning equipment, 
and NIDAC, an innovative major producer of electric motors. Japan is more like Germany than the U.S., says Masakazu Takeda, a portfolio manager at Sparks Asset Management in Japan and co-manager of the Hennessy Japan Fund. There aren't too many internet companies, but Japan has highly competitive manufacturing businesses. Manufacturing excellence is one of Japan's advantages. So how do you play Japan? The largest ETF is the $10 billion iShares MSCI Japan, symbol EWJ. The $1.5 billion Wisdom Tree Japan hedged equity ETF, symbol DXJ, neutralizes the yen dollar currency risk. One benefit of the Wisdom Tree Fund is that export-oriented Japanese companies tend to do well during periods of yen weakness, which would offset equity gains in an unhedged fund. Active managers in Japan have been able to gain an edge over broad ETFs given a still large number of low-return companies. The Hennessy Fund, for instance, has excelled with a 13% annualized return in the five years through Thursday against a 7% annual return for the topics index. All right, so I want to pause there and say what their point is that because the overall stock market isn't an increasing market, it's harder just to buy passive index funds and hold, hoping that they will outperform. Of course, they're not going to outperform because the market hasn't outperformed. The market hasn't been going up. So rather, what has worked well is to pick individual stocks, and that favors mutual fund managers over passive ETF investments. The article goes on to say, Hennessy's Takeda is partial to Daikin, the world's number one air conditioning company, and a rival to Carrier Global and Train Technologies in the U.S., It's not just air conditioning, but air purification technology, which is important in a COVID-19 world, he says. Daikin, however, trades for about 29 times projected earnings in its fiscal year, ending in March 2022. The U.S. listed shares, DKILY, trade around $18. Simon Fennell, a co-portfolio manager of the William Blair International Leaders Fund, favors Cayence, which he calls the world leader in factory automation, with an attractive growth outlook. Its Japanese shares are richly valued at 45 times fiscal 2022 earnings. Its U.S. shares fetch around $416 a share. Toyota Motors, long the world's most valuable auto company, was eclipsed this year by Tesla, which now has a market value of $385 billion, about double Toyota's $185 billion. Toyota is an extremely well-managed company with strong returns and a fortress balance sheet, says Eric Liu, a portfolio manager of the Oakmark Global Select Fund. It's a very cheap stock. At around $130, Toyota trades for about 11 times projected earnings in its March 2022 fiscal year and yields 3%. It had net cash and equivalents of more than $80 billion at its core car operations at the end of March, or nearly 50% of its market value. Toyota has been slower than some of its competitors developing all electric vehicles, favoring gasoline electric hybrids where it leads the industry. It plans to introduce a group of EVs in coming years backed by strong battery technology. Lou notes that Toyota generates the auto industry's highest returns and is the only car maker profitable in all five major regions of the world. As value investors, we think Toyota is much more attractive than Tesla, Lou says. The electric vehicle space will get very competitive in the coming years. SoftBank, controlled by Masayoshi Son, amounts to a tech and e-commerce fund trading for just over half its estimated net asset value. Its influence as an investment company was underscored on Friday by reports that it had bought call options tied to billions of dollars worth of tech stocks. Its most valuable asset is a roughly 25% stake in Alibaba Group Holding, worth some $200 billion. It also has a stake in SoftBank, a Japanese wireless carrier, and owns Arm Holding, a UK chip designer that SoftBank may sell or take part of it public and it operates the SoftBank Vision Fund, which was stung by a high-profile loss in its investment in WeWork. The fund, however, accounts for a little more than 10% of SoftBank's net asset value. Its U.S.-listed shares, 
SFTBY is the symbol, trade at around $30. Sakai of Harding Lovner likes Makita, a maker of power tools that competes against Stanley Black & Decker. Makita's strength in lithium ion battery technology has enabled it to produce cordless gardening tools like hedge trimmers and leaf blowers that are safer, quieter, and better for the environment than, ga- than gasoline-powered models. The stock isn't a bargain at 26 times projected fiscal 2022 earnings. U.S. listed shares, symbol MKTAY, trade around $45. Still, the overall Japanese market is inexpensive and features improving returns and some world-class companies. And then it shows you that you can invest in an ETF, which is the Wisdom Tree Japan Hedge Fund, equity ETF symbol DXJ, or there are mutual funds, the Hennessy Japan Mutual Funds symbol HJPNX, or the Matthews Japan Mutual Funds symbol MJFOX, And then they list the five companies that I mentioned in the article, Daikin Industries, Cayenne, Makita, SoftBank, and Toyota, and uh, give some information about them. So I will post a link to this article in the show notes in case you want to take a look at it, look at these charts, do some further research. But I think it's very interesting that Warren Buffett is going over to invest in Japan obviously a very undervalued market and obviously there are some good companies over there good bargains to be had and he's just sifted through i think a lot of what's going on over there in japan and found some real gems that he has decided to invest six billion dollars in one thing that really strikes me is what if the japanese market was about to make a comeback What if the Japanese market turned into another long-term bull market and he invested $6 billion in five trading companies because those trading companies were about to do really well if the stock market returned to its former glory? Kind of makes sense, don't you think? So maybe Warren Buffett is telling us that Japan is about to make a rebound or Maybe there's something deeper in these five companies that he bought that we still don't quite know about. Well, I know Warren Buffett is very interesting to many people and what he's doing and what he's investing in is interesting to people. So we'll continue to report on him and follow up with you on his subsequent investments and any further comments that we hear about these Japanese investments. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available. And if you're looking for a good financial book to read, check out Your Already a Wealth Heiress, Now Think and Act Like One, Six Practical Steps to Make It a Reality Now. This book was rated one of the all-time best wealth books by Book Authority, and it gives you all that you need to know to generate your next million. Whether you're starting with a million or starting at zero, it doesn't matter. You'll see real clarity on what you need to do and how to overcome any limitations, obstacles, or blocks that you have. You can find it on Amazon, amazon amazon.uk, or any bookstore. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.